and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we're going to learn all about the upcoming 20th anniversary celebration for the Quincy Animal Shelter next month. First, though, we check out the weather and the news for you this morning. Currently in Quincy, beautiful sunshine out there. It's 70 degrees right now. We're not stopping there. We're headed for about 80 today with mostly sunny skies. It really kicks off a beautiful stretch of summertime weather right through the weekend. This is the last weekend of summer and it is really going to feel like it tomorrow. We've got sunshine and warm temperatures into the lower 80s, much more humid on Sunday. It'll feel like midsummer with highs mid maybe upper 80s on Sunday and still pretty warm on Monday. With a high of 84 degrees, it'll start to cool off a bit on Tuesday with a chance for some showers. But until then, we've got a beautiful stretch of weather. Again, sunny and 70 in Quincy right now. In the news today, flood prone areas of Howes Neck, Adams Shore and Marymount will be seeing some relief after a section of seawall is replaced. The City Council earlier this week did approve over $14 million to raise a stretch of seawall to a total height of 15 feet. It's designed to protect that area for at least the next 50 years. Ward 1 Councilor Dave McCarthy says the project is needed to bring some peace of mind to homeowners in that area. That um, is overdue. It's something that we have worked at very hard in, in, in analyzing um, drainage, seawall height, uh, impact to the marshlands down there, and, it, and it's just a, um, a very well uh, put together uh, project uh, by, uh, by the gentleman in the front row, and um, the neighbors were instrumental, and I can't uh, say enough about the mayor uh, uh, not saying no to anything to, to make sure that public safety was number one. So. Uh, I just wanted to put that in. I know that this was on my watch right at the beginning, and um, it, it, it wakes you up right away when something like this happens, and you have to get into the game, and um, it was, uh, it was uh, very well put together. So uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, but uh, kudos to, to a lot of people in this room. Now, later this fall, the City Council will be voting on over $3 million that's needed for a new pumping station and some other flood control measures in that area. McCarthy says the new seawall should be completed in about a year. Still no decision on a proposal for a new housing development at the site of the former Quincy Medical Center. Fox Rock Properties of Quincy did not appear before a special meeting of the planning board this week, which was scheduled to discuss that proposal. Fox Rock has further reduced the number of units that they'd like to build to 465. That's down another 25 units. It's 133 fewer than the original proposal of 598 units that was made almost a year ago. Residents, though, continue to express concern that the project is just too large for the residential setting and will create disruptive traffic and parking issues. Another public hearing about the proposal will be scheduled later this fall. There were two recent promotions on the Quincy Police Department. Mark Foley was promoted to a lieutenant and Paul Coughlin was made a sergeant. Quincy Police Chief Paul Keenan said that both officers have earned their new positions. Pleasant day and one of the one of the nicer things that I get to do is when we swear in new officers. They're not so new. You know, Mark's been around for a lot of years. He's done an awful lot of things in the Quincy Police Department. Motorcycles, he was an outstanding drug officer for a number of years. He's a well-respected sergeant by not only the people that work for him, but the people that work with him. Mark, I can honestly say, is never at a loss for words, and you never mince his words. You always know what he's thinking, which is kind of refreshing. It's always nice to bring a new perspective to the Quincy Police Department. Every time we get a new promotion, they bring new, new ideas to the table and new energy to the table. And I congratulate you, Mark. I know you've worked hard and you've been around for a long time. Paul has been on for a few years. It's, uh, our gain was Boston's loss. He transferred over from Boston. He's been a great asset to the department, both in patrol and in traffic. And I know how hard it how hard these offices have to study to get where we are. We're probably one of the most difficult departments in the Commonwealth to get promoted in because we've got such an intelligent, enlightened group of men and women that take these tests and study. 
Foley joined the Quincy Police Department in 1988, worked over 10 years in the drug control units and was promoted to sergeant back in 20, 2005. Coughlin joined the department in 2012 after 15 years in law enforcement, including in the city of Boston. Those promotions were the result of the recent retirement of Lieutenant Paul Tarowski. Interfaith Social Services of Quincy is seeking donations of new Halloween costumes. It's for their annual Halloween costume drive. Every October, Interfaith distributes hundreds of costumes to the children who are served through their food pantry. Individuals and businesses donate these costumes. They're sorted by volunteers. And then in mid-October, food pantry clients and families are invited to shop and select a costume for each child in their family age 12 and under. The donations of new costumes can be made at Interfaith's headquarters on Adams Street in Quincy Center right through October 11th. And now that you're up to date with weather and news, check out our programming lineup for later on today here on Quincy Access Television. And it'll start with a replay of this program currently in Quincy at 5 o'clock. At 6 o'clock, join us for Sound Advice with Attorney Tom Williams. Hello folks, I'm Attorney Tom Williams and welcome to Sound Advice. Currently in Quincy, the interviews at 6.30. Our guests, folks from Quinn Cycles. 7 o'clock a.m. Quincy, we chat with Quincy Ward 5 City Council candidate Stephen Christo. A media advisory at 7.30, the recent 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony here in Quincy. Then at 7.45, a media advisory, see that full Quincy Police Promotion Ceremony. State View at 8 p.m. with State Representative Ron Mariano. At 8.30, a look back at a World War I housing effort here in Quincy. Extraordinary undertaking in Quincy. Democracy Now! 10 o'clock on Channel 8. Check out Channel 9 every day and learn about Quincy City Department's different committee activities. It starts at 5.30 with Quincy in focus. Six o'clock, update DPW, all about the fall season. Brand new FYI at 6.30 from the Quincy Health Department, the topic, strokes. State View with Representative Ron Mariano tonight at seven on Channel 9. 7.30, it's AM Quincy with Quincy Veteran Services Director, George Nicholson. And at the library concert at 8 o'clock, an encore of Crow's Pasture. And at 9 o'clock, find out what's happening at your library for the rest of September. Welcome to At Your Library. You can get a complete program schedule on our website, which is qatv.org. When you get there, click on Program Schedule. And do please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. And you can always check out our weekly ad in the Quincy Sun. Coming up, we take a look at just a few of the current events and activities that are being featured on our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8. Please stay with us. We're back with you in just one minute. Welcome back. Here is a check of some of the current events and activities we're featuring on our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for you to know about. Just a reminder that the Quincy Farmers Market is still open every Friday from 11.30 to 5 up at Pageant Field. The market features fresh local produce, artisans, crafters, and there's free live entertainment every Friday too. You can visit their website, quincyfarmersmarket.com, for a complete schedule. Quincy Community Action Program's Financial Reach Center will be open September 27th at 10 a.m. right at their Quincy Center headquarters. Free credit counseling, financial management, job search, support and placement, and much more are available. Visit qcap.org or call them at 617-657-5355. The annual City of Presidents 5K Run and Walk is coming up September 29th at Adams Field at 9.30 in the morning. 
go to cityofpresidents5k.racewire.com. All the proceeds this year will benefit the health and wellness programs in the Quincy Public Schools. Finally, please mark your calendars for October 5th. You are invited to join us right here at Quincy Access Television. It's our annual open house. Stop by between 10 and 2 at our studios right next to the Thomas Crane Library in Quincy Center. You get to enjoy some music, some free stuff, refreshments. There'll be a live show being produced, and you can learn about how you can produce your own show and become a member for free that day. Be entered for a chance to win a new Apple Watch. And if you have an event or an activity you'd like to promote, visit our website at QATV.org. Just download a bulletin board request form, fill it out and send it in. We'll get that message up here on Channel 8 too. Coming up, we check in with two volunteers from the Quincy Animal Shelter, preparing for their 20th anniversary later this year. That's next. Welcome back. The uh, folks at the Quincy Animal Shelter are gearing up for their 20th anniversary celebration in October. But uh, not only that, they're busy every single day with uh, the uh, dogs and cats and all the care that goes into that. So Emily Duff and Joanne McCarthy have stopped on by to chat with us a little bit about that and about how you might be able to help them. So ladies, welcome. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Yeah, great to have you. Um, again, both of you, I guess, have been here in the past. So <laughs> welcome back, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, Emily, uh, talk to us a little bit, I guess, if you can, about what's going on at the shelter now well right now we are c going through phase two of kitten season kitten usually season, in the spring right? yes yeah. exactly kitten season is usually in the spring but we just had a ton of kittens this year i think we were up to 71 at one point yeah. wow yeah we we're a little beyond that now okay. and kitten season i think started a little later this year too yeah. as it stands now i think we have 42 in foster and uh, that's a lot of kittens. That's a lot it? of kittens. How many do you typically have, would you say? Um, probably that's about right. Okay. But um, one year we uh, adopted out 160 kittens wow. in kitten season. I don't think we'll reach that this year. Okay. Neither did we reach it last year. So okay. that's good news. We, yes. We must be getting a hold of those would-be mothers in time. Right, and, yeah. Um, yeah, this year it's it's going to be a hundred though I'm sure before the season is over we okay. must almost be there now yeah. so that presents some challenges I'm sure in the shelter um, because I know you don't like to keep them with the dogs right if, right, if you can avoid we can't. it yeah. and uh, to be honest with you too every kitten that comes in is seen at least once or well, more than once by a vet okay. is spayed or neutered is chipped and that's a lot of money. Go. It's an expense. <laughs> right, a lot of right. money out of the budget. Yeah, yeah, and I bet they're coming in probably, if they're from the street, they have fleas, they have ear oh, yeah. they have uh, health issues that you need to deal oh, with. Oh, they also. do. Yeah. yeah, almost all of them that come in sure. have worms. Or sure, yeah. Oh. yeah. It's pretty common, right, yeah, for, oh, yeah. for kittens? Yeah. yeah, and we treat all that. Yeah. yeah. And most okay. of them are in foster situations while, like when the, with the mother's pregnant and yep. then born, so they're not at the actual shelter. We have our our volunteers take them to their home. And, and I know a lot of the foster families kind of fail fostering, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they want to keep, maybe I keep did. one. Yeah, exactly. You did? Yeah. How many times did you fail, Joanne? <laughs> I only failed one. Oh, not bad. Okay. <laughs> I, I had two, three other cats at the time, okay. though, and I well, failed, and it went on to four. That's what happened. Yeah. 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 Uh, how about, Emily, how about the dog uh, situation, the population right now? Do, our dog population always goes up and down. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I, f from what I've noticed over the 10 years I've been doing this, is it's always the situation we run into is people that just drop their dogs off in the park and yeah. drive away. Yeah. And that just happened recently, and fortunately a volunteer had saw it happen, so really? grabbed the dog and brought it in. Okay. That dog was Evan, and he just went home this week. Oh, great. So he's, he's doing oh. very well. Okay. We're very happy for him. I mean, we always find them a home, so we're not worried about that. Yeah. Um, right now we have a, uh, about four dogs that are, I believe they're all available. A couple of them are going home. One's going home tomorrow. We had a husky. Okay. We have a puppy German Shepherd who's a uh, lovely girl, Lily, and I believe she's available. I think so. Okay. Um, so if anyone's interested in a German Shepherd puppy, she's a great dog. Okay. And she's a puppy though. Yeah, she's I mean, a puppy. She's she very. Needs, she's she's doing alive. well with her training active. already. Yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> active. You just Energetic. have to be. You have to have some energy gotcha. and some time yeah. for Maybe a puppy. Maybe a nice fenced yard for. Her yes. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we have a couple little guys too that you know probably just need a nice cat. 
couch and um <laughs> you know maybe we have a little one that probably could be with an older couple and okay um but yeah we have something for everybody yeah. usually well, conveniently <laughs> you're open tomorrow right yes. right so yep. saturdays, yeah what are the actual adoption hours uh right 10 now? 10 to 4 okay. on saturdays okay. yep and then we're also open um tuesday and thursday evenings from six to eight okay so if you want to come in and um, if you want to get on the list for a kitten, mm -hmm. give us a call, and you know we have them, so mm -hmm. <laughs> right. we right. can work Just on that too. Just to wait till they're old enough, two. right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah. I'd take two. <laughs> How about adult cats? What's the situation? We always have a, t a lot of adult cats, yeah. and, and um, those are the ones that we all really love Probably too. Probably harder to adopt out, I would think. At right? this Sometimes. time of the year, yeah, because yeah. yeah. the kittens People take center want stage. The yep. kittens. Silly them. No, I shouldn't yeah. say that. <laughs> but we should. We always. We always want people to come see our adult cats because so they're they're beautiful and yeah. there's a lot of them are very friendly and you know they just want some. Cats are so. I I think cats are easy. So. You know, they just need someone to give them a window to sit in and feed them every now and then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty self-sufficient. Exactly. Mostly, you know, um, d d usually they'll go <laughs> under a bed. Exactly. And anything to Leave do me with alone. Them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. But yeah, the, so um, yeah, we have we, we're always interested in having people at least come see what we have, and it does fluctuate. You know, yeah. there's times we come in and there's like three cats and one dog. Yep. So it just it varies each week to week. Yeah. yeah. What's the current volunteer situation at the shelter? Um, how are you staffed, and what do you need? We're we're up to I believe just over two hundred volunteers. Wow. Wow. So you know every every day has two shifts: a okay. morning shift and an evening shift. So it's wonderful that it's all volunteers doing all that work, and um, we're always you know welcome to having people come join as a volunteer. And if you don't feel like you're up to working with a cat or a dog, we can always use help with like data entry or oh, cleaning right. or, okay. you know, there's all sorts of chores to be done and, and the cat and dog volunteers do those too. Sure. So, but, uh, but we always want people to feel like even if they're not up for working with the animals, we can always Just welcome their help. You can help somehow. Right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, maybe with um, the 20th anniversary celebration. Yeah, there. Yeah. That's yeah. coming up. <laughs> uh, this will be Saturday, October 26th. 7 to 11 p.m. at the Terrell Room. Um, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years. I know. I know. We're yeah. very excited. This yeah. is very, very proud, too, yeah. I yeah. think. Yeah. You know, because the, the people who started it started it simply because at the time uh, Quincy did euthanize stray animals mm. or give them to someone else who did. Yep. You know, it's, I don't think it was that unusual then, but there was a few women meeting over coffee or something said, this has got to stop. Yeah. Yeah. And they did it, and Don Conboy was beginning then, and he was all for it, and yep. he's still a big supporter. He's our animal us. control officer. Right, yeah. yeah, and as a matter of fact, he'll, he'll be combined uh, with the shelter in the new facility once that uh, is completed. <laughs> someday. Yeah, someday. <laughs> someday, yeah. <laughs> it started. We're, we're positive no, about it. No, it, it. But we're, the 20th part is a very a big oh, milestone. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. It sort of started, yeah. yeah. So, and like you said, Emily, the 20th is, is kind of the impetus to jump started if you will right? yeah, yeah we you know because it's it's from what i hear it's tough for a volunteer organization to just stick around for that long yeah. so we're proud of that and we're we're really hoping people will come to our our celebration on the 26th yeah tell me about it it's called the save them all ball yes uh the 26th from 7 to 11 at the terrell room uh a fun night of dancing drinks food prizes and more yeah uh cocktail attire encouraged encouraged not so you know no i'm rules. guessing that the four-legged friends that are not invited to probably them. not going <laughs> to see many of them that night, yeah. unfortunately. No, but no. Um, we would always welcome it. But yes. We don't want to do that to the Terrell room, right? So. right. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, wedding afterwards might not appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think we're going to get a lot of our you know pe patrons who have been with us for years, yeah. adopting animals and supporting the shelter, and and we're just it's open to everybody. Um, it's uh, I imagine it's a twenty-one and up event, sure, but yeah. but we hope to see you know all of as many Quincy local people that we can get in there to help us celebrate. There's a little video that's been uh, produced uh, <laughs> to promoting this particular event. Tell, yes. me, tell me the story behind this video before we show it to folks. Oh, well, you know, we're just, we're, we're a low budget organization. <laughs> so we don't have, you know, we don't have a lot of the, the glamor for, to make commercials and yeah. things like that. But my husband um, is an Emerson grad and has a little experience with that stuff. So he helped me. I did the photo part, which isn't too professional, but he did the other part. Okay. And um, 
he helped put those together just okay. to give us, you know, we can we pass them around on social media, yeah. trying to let people know. We want to we want to make it enticing and everybody know it's going to be a fun night. Okay. So All we're right. just trying to keep that fun vibe. Every, everybody needs a party now and then. Is it his voice on on the? It uh, is. Yeah. On the video. It yes. Is. Okay. He's let's, the let's give uh, <laughs> let's show folks uh, that what that's all about uh, for the Quincy Animal Shelter. Thank you. Quincy Animal Shelter is celebrating its 20th anniversary. Join us for the Save Them All Ball on October 26th at the Terrell Room in Quincy. It will be a fun party with great food, dancing, party games, raffles, a silent auction, and much more. Tickets are on sale now at QuincyAnimalShelter.org and selling fast. We hope to see you there. <laughs> I wish she was going Okay, to so it. that's the original Snoop Dogg. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> that, um, um, Joanne, talk to me a little bit about um, your involvement in the shelter, how you got involved in the first place, and, and what is it that you like about it? Uh, I've been there I'm 18 years wow. now, and um, I used to recycle. <laughs> I still do, but <laughs> the recycling bin was closer to the outside kennel. And every time I recycled, I'd see dogs in that kennel, you know, and I would break my heart. Oh. Then, uh, so I decided to go in and volunteer. Yeah. And I was going to save them all. <laughs> uh, and I went in to volunteer, and the first night I went in for um, orientation, there were a bunch of the volunteers were there and they were going to a shower afterwards and it was actually for a woman who had become homeless hmm. was living at father bill's and had kept her cat with us which is i mean we were going to adopt it out supposedly mm -hmm. if if we found a good adopter but it wasn't adopted out so she was being reunited with her cat and the volunteers were throwing her a shower. Oh. I said, I want to, I want to be with these people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was they were treating, they were caring not only for the cat yep. but for the cat's owner. Right. And I think we do do a lot of that. Um, we have to do a lot of that. Um, and in that case, I just was, I really was impressed. Yeah. And I said, I just so sign me up. So it's much <laughs> more for you than just a, a, you know, a shelter where you go and feed the dogs and cats and leave. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we kind of, a few of us got teary today when someone had to give up their cat. Yeah. And, and the person was devastated, but she had really good reason. And you want to comfort her as well as the animal, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And at least, you know, you're not trained for this kind of type of thing. It's just a, a human connection that you yeah, have. Yeah, right, right. So it makes the event like the fundraiser all that much more important, you know, to make sure that the shelter continues its mission um, because it is all volunteer. There's one paid person, yep. which is a very nominal, you know, yeah. uh, salary too, just basically to handle the, the books and the paperwork and, and make sure the building doesn't collapse. But yes. <laughs> you know, but, but other than that, um, it's like you say, the 200 people that give up their time every single day. It really um, is. And that's, you know... 365, seven days a week, 24-7, right. they're living animals in the shelter. So yeah, right. uh, absolutely. Yeah. How about yourself, Emily? How did you get involved? Um, I've been doing it for 10 years now, and um, I just, I didn't have a dog at the time, and I missed having a dog, hmm. so I became a dog walker. Okay. And I thought, oh, this will be great, I'll be able to, because I, I didn't know if I could have a dog with my work situation. And then about two years in, I found my dog, and I had to take her home immediately. So <laughs> now I just... Every time I look at my dog, I think, oh, my gosh, this place, it means so much to me because right. it brought me her. And the same thing as Joanne. It's just, it's a touching environment. We've all, you know, I don't know every of the 200 volunteers, but the ones that I do know, we've we've really bonded over sure. the years and, um, uh, you know, evolved. Like, I, I joined the board this year, and mm. Joanne's been on the board for a few years. Mm -hmm. and so I, I thought, okay, it's 10 years. What more can I do? Right. Um, and so then I, with that, I became... Um, put into the events manager position, which is why I'm, I'm working on the party. But yep. it's just one of those things where I, I love what we're doing so much that I just want to keep it alive and keep it going and sure. keep people, you know, coming in and 
checking out our animals and helping out if they want to. All right. Well, QuincyAnimalShelter.org, probably the best place to go to get tickets for the uh, 20th anniversary celebration, uh, October 26, 7 to 11 at the Terrell Room. Hope yep. it goes great for you, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Please Thank you so us. much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Just enough time to recap the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Beautiful sunshine, temperature up around 80 degrees. It's the start of a big warm up over the weekend, the last weekend of summer. A little warmer tomorrow into the low 80s, a little warmer on Sunday into the mid, maybe upper 80s. It'll feel more humid on Sunday. And the nice stretch continues right into the first day of fall on Monday. Thanks again going out to Joanne McCarthy and Emily Duff for joining us from the Quincy. Thank and you. Center. You're welcome. Thanks to our crew and thank you for watching. Monday at 1130, we'll learn all about the annual City of Presidents 5K on another live edition of Currently in Quincy. Have a good weekend.